let's get started. Um, as you go, go over uh, installing, downloading, and registering the Sophos XG Home Edition. It's a free firewall, right? Free enterprise class firewall with um, that you can run on a virtual machine. You could run it on a computer. You can make your own hardware firewall if you wanted to. But it's you know full featured. Um, here's what it, you know. Here's a list of some things it has. You know, obviously the firewall piece, IPS, traffic shaping, URL filtering, web policies. You know, anti anti uh, antivirus, anti malware scanning of stuff, VPN reporting, and all sorts of good stuff. You can get it for free, right? We also sell it obviously in our appliances and virtual. Uh, but this is for non-commercial use, so you just do a Google search for this. Sophos XG Firewall Home Edition will bring you to this URL. Click to get started. Now you're going to need a My Sophos account. That's the other thing you'll need. So you know, do a Google search for My Sophos. Sign up. Use an email address. Now over here it knows that I'm logged in to my My Sophos account as this Gmail. So I'll come over here. Select anything. ISO of the Sophos Firewall um, operating system. Now, I just did that so I can get a, a, a license key so I can un over in my Gmail that I'll be able to um, unlock the appliance once I load up the ISO in my virtual system, right? So let's do that now. So come over to VirtualBox, New Settings, you know, Mr. Sophos XG I've done it a number of times, had all sorts of problems with my recording software. Now I think I squared that away. 64 bit, it's going to be a 64 bit system. And then we'll give it 2 gigs of RAM or something. Create a virtual disk. Yep, VDI. Next, dynamically sized. We'll make it 64 gigabytes. Alright, so before I fire this guy up, Settings, network. I'm going to talk about network real quick. So this is going to need two network adapters. The network adapter two, we're going to want that on NAT, so it has internet access. That'll end up being um, in the firmware. It'll get allocated as the WAN port. If I just leave it on NAT, it will work. Network adapter one, you're going to want to make that a host-only adapter, right? Host-only adapters mean a network that you've defined in the realm of VMware that the host is able to communicate with, right? So I have configured a whole number of host-only adapters here, especially number 7, that is on this network 172.16.16.1. That network 172.16.16, class C subnet mask, is the same network that the XG appliance starts up with on its LAN interface. So that's the XG would end up being 172.16.16.16. But just to point out, you need a host-only adapter on that same network so that you can communicate to web admin. So I'll go ahead and do that. Put that one on a host-only adapter. Okay. Number seven. All right. So this guy, I, I just did a few minutes ago. I'm going to delete them so to conserve disk space. And here's the one I just configured, right? It's got the... It's only got one NIC card, why? Settings, network, adapter, enable, NAT. And then storage, attach my software, Sophos Firewall Operating System 15, whatever. Click OK. Two NIC cards, one on NAT, and the other one on my host-only adapter. Fire it up. Alright, so I'm 
going to pause the video because this, this part right here, when it goes ahead and installs, we'll get to the point of where it says, do you want to format the disk, right? But when it installs, it's, you know, it installs, it's pretty, um, takes about 10 minutes to format the whole disk. So we'll just wait till that screen pops up, starting firmware, blah, blah, blah. Do you want to, here it says, do you want to continue? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to pause as it goes through that. It takes like this 10 minutes. Alright, so we're back. Um, so remove installer disk, press Y to reboot. So machine, settings, storage, disk, and remove, right? And press Y. Now remember, adapter 1, host only adapter, which is network 172.16.16.0. If I look here on my command prompt, config forward slash find 172.16.16. I've got an IP address on this system that's for the virtual machine 172.16.16. 16. That's my host operating system as an adapter with that running that address. The same address that's going to be the default address for the LAN 172.16.16.16. VXG. That's how you're going to connect to it. And I've got the other adapter bound to NAT so it can get out to the internet, right? Sharing my wireless connection. So I got this email from Sophos. Once I registered, right, you saw that when I did the free version. Here's my serial number that I'll be using to unlock it. Also note, you see here, it tells me upon starting the first time. It doesn't tell you what you should do with your VM. That's the purpose of this video. It just says that your LAN address should be this, right? Once we do 16, 16, 16. If you were installing this on a piece of hardware, um, you would want to put your computer that you're working with it on, the, the NIC card on 172, 16, 16, give it address 50, who cares? Slash 24, no gateway. So you can at least access the appliance, right? So, see what's going on here. By the way, the default password is admin. Notice it won't let me do anything until I go to the web admin piece. Let's do that now. Yes. 172.16.16. So sometimes even though there, it's working this time, sometimes it may take a couple minutes. Um, the, in the background, there's a lot of things that are starting up. So username, admin, password, admin. That's the default, right? So scroll through this bottom, except then I need to paste in my serial number that I got through the email confirmation when I registered, when I submitted for it. Now if I click activate, it's not going to work because basic setup is set to static and my NAT environment is DHCP. So I'll save my, so that my WAN adapter gets DHCP, so that worked. Now I'll click activate. And that should show me up here that it was able to successfully activate. If it isn't, something's preventing it network access. Okay, so you have to look at that. You have to look at, well, what's preventing network access of my VM? Maybe an upstream firewall? I don't know. So then, register. Yep. I'm not a robot. I have to maximize this because I am not a robot. I'm going to be, like, clicking pictures and stuff. Select all squares with street signs. So I'm going to suppose that. I suppose this one, because it has some piece of it. Oh, man. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. I don't know. That's new. So there we go. Initiate synchronization. So let me go ahead and pushing it to information about this appliance to the My Sophos account that I've submitted for a um, my free license. I can check that. Let's just minimize this and go over here. Network protection. New devices. There'll be a bunch of them. I've been doing a bunch of home user tests. So as they as I license them, they show up here. So 
it says here, click here to start. Excuse me. And then you could use the wizard by clicking start. I'm just it's gonna skip, it's gonna bring me to the firmware page, the web admin page. So here I've got reports, I've got all my policies, my firewall policies, my DNAT type policies, address translation policies, my protection different policies for protection. I can create filters and categories and stuff like that, exceptions, and then my system settings, things like defining the actual addresses bound to the interfaces, um, unicast, multicast routes, authentication sources, site-to-site -site tunneling, so it's all there. So it wasn't that bad. That's how you get now. You've got it, um, a functional VM that's registered here. Now I can go ahead and integrate this into like a, a GNS3 environment for more elaborate test scenarios, so I'll go over that next.